let's talk about food. This is the kitchen on the Sogging Witch. On a boat, they call the kitchen a galley. So this is the boat's galley. I'd like to share with you a few ideas about how this boat has successfully fed people a large variety of food, healthy and nutritious, for, heck, it's been more than three months since the last time I've been to a property, you know, a well-stocked grocery store. And um, eating is fine. I remember once reading about how the World Health Organization split this world into two camps. Half of the world is basically undernourished and the other is malnourished. I don't remember which is which, but um, basically the one camp is living in scarcity and the other camp is living in abundance with access to a huge variety of food. However, they're not getting the nutrients that they need. So the ideas I'm going to share here are actually relevant to a large number of people in the abundance camp. First, I'm going to share with you a few ideas to consider. And then I'll share with you how this boat is set up to manage those. So the first idea to consider is storage. Food comes in packaging and a lot of times that includes bugs. Like, if, well, if not the bugs themselves, then maybe the larvae or the eggs that become bugs. Um, cereals and flowers will come with, you know, weevils and other things. And even cockroaches and other bugs like hanging out and eating the glue that's found with cardboard. So a lot of foods that you buy with cardboard includes bugs. Then you bring that onto a boat and you know, you got your new ecosystem includes them. Um, a lot of processed foods, pre-processed, comes with packaging that becomes garbage. And then you have to consider how you're going to store that garbage. You can't just throw it away. You may have to burn it or get rid of it somehow. Uh, but first you need to store it. Um, some foods come and they need to be kept in a refrigerator or a freezer. How are you going to power that refrigerator or freezer? What happens if the power generation source goes bad? Maybe you don't have a, you know, priorities are for other instruments for like navigation. And so then you, what happens to that food? So the second idea I'm going to talk about is processing. Food processing is worth considering on this boat because it does a lot of the processing. We do a lot of the processing on the boat. Um, it seems like the more conventional means is pre-processed. Um, you know, I already talked a bit as far as in storage about what do you do with the packaging and that becomes garbage. So that's a huge consideration for pre-processed foods. Um, another thing worth considering is, you know, the health of the pre-processed foods. I remember once being in a store and I saw a package of ice cream. It was like dehydrated ice cream in like, like a powder. And I looked at the ingredients and I couldn't even pronounce. I don't know what the heck was in that stuff. You know, it's kind of amazing. You know, one time I was looking in the encyclopedia, you know, just kind of browsing, wasting time. And, you know, I like vanilla. You know, just another example. You know, you don't really know what you're getting at pre-processed foods. So, vanilla extract is most of the time artificial because it's not made in many parts of the world. They're not grown and hard to harvest. It's a lot of manual work into it or something. So when you buy artificial vanilla extract, most likely on the ingredients label, it's gonna say other natural flavorings or other natural ingredients. And that means castorium. And castorium comes from North American beaver scent. 
they use it for like perfumes, but mostly it's for vanilla extract. So, um, I don't know. I'm still gonna eat vanilla extract because I like it, but that's just one example that's kind of crazy on some of the garbage we get in our processed foods. So that's the second idea that we're gonna consider because the goal on this boat is to bring as much processing, you know, back, do as much processing on the boat and leave as little out, you know, before the boat as possible. Okay, the third idea we're going to consider is cooking. What kind of power source we're going to use for it? Propane's popular, natural gas, diesel, sun, kerosene. Um, what kind of equipment are we going to use to make the most efficient use of that fuel? So, now I'll share with you how this boat manages those three ideas or constraints and still delivers a large variety of healthy, nutritious food. So for storage, this boat manages without a refrigerator and without a, free a freezer. No worries about the power consumption or generation of that power. And, you know, only a few generations ago and beyond and before, nobody had a refrigerator or a freezer. And actually, I think a, a lot of knowledge since those times has been lost in terms of effective long-term food storage. For example, with netting, I put a lot of food in nets. And what you put together affects how long they live. Like, for example, you don't want to put oranges and apples together. So citrus and apples or pears do not like being together. But same thing with potatoes and onions. Don't put them together. But if you put onions and citrus together, they will last longer. It's like both retard each other's ripening. And same with um, apples and potatoes, pears and potatoes. If you put them together, then they retard each other's ripening. So that's why the Sogging Witch has two hammocks and they segregate those. I'm sure there's other forms of storing, you know, fruits and vegetables like that. Um, but mostly, you know, cabbage will last, you know, a month or two. Um, onions, potatoes will last, you know, a couple months. You know, carrots will last a long time. There's a lot of things that, that will last for many weeks without a refrigerator. Others like broccoli, you have to eat sooner, only will last a couple of days. Um, for cheese, for example, will last quite some time. You know, this is three weeks old. It may not be square with any right angles on it anymore, but it's still perfectly good. Um, I'll get hard cheese and like Asiago and cut it into chunks and wrap them in cheesecloth, wrap it in cheesecloth and dip it in wax. And this is an awesome chunk of cheese that was probably done a year ago. And I'll bet you it's better and more flavorful today than it was when I bought it. Um, eggs will last for, heck, this is three weeks old. And you just have to turn it every couple of days so that the air pocket inside the egg doesn't stay in the same spot and put it in a container where it's um, air, air can flow and the eggs will last for longer than a month in hot tropic climate. Um, these, there's a lot of grains and legumes on this boat and for example, consider these lentils. This container, I'll put the lentils in with an oxy oxygen absorber. So this is a peat container. It completely seals out water. Oxygen long enough. It's not completely oxygen um, permeable, but or impermeable, but long enough for an, absorber, an absorbent 
oxygen absorber to kill any bugs that came with the grains or legumes and any larva that gets born they die because there's no oxygen so it's long enough for you know many weeks to kill anything so you basically bring no bugs along as far as nutrition goes this container of lentils for example has over 6,000 calories and close to 500 grams of protein so you get a lot of nutrients and you get no bugs and it's uh, dense so it doesn't take up much space and that's the same with beans um, dehydrated vegetables so this is broccoli and potato and what else this is like um, it's like soup base but it can be a lot of things it's carrots and parsley and onion and so you pro this is kind of you can process it yourself so that's how this boat manages you know some of the way it manages some storage of food so for the processing of food I've tried to push that back as far as possible you know hence these grains so I have a grinder here um, basically by hand you put a number of different attachments to it and this one here will turn this spelt into flour that can be made into bread biscuits tortillas um, cookies pasta any number of things I'll grind up beans and put that together and make um, like vegetable burgers and put that in all kinds of things you can make hummus and bean dip um, it's basically limited to your imagination um, here is another thing to turn oat into oatmeal you ever bought cereal and seen bugs in it you know a few months later so this is a lot more dense when you store food in its natural state whole state here it actually is more dense so basically this spelt unground like it is if I ground this into flour it would it would be almost double the volume so this would almost fill a package of flour that you buy in the store but here it takes it's more dense so it takes less space um, here's a thing to make spaghetti grind up spelt into flour mix it with some eggs and some olive oil and you got spaghetti um, there's a little grinder here for processing to this this thing I used the other day and turned two coconuts into shreds in about 10 minutes um, this guy here is valuable if you get like herbs there's lots of herbs and spices so you can get whole is better because it holds its flavor longer so like the cumin the cardamom pepper corns something like this so you can grind them up and you'll get a lot more flavor over you know out of six month old spice or herb than you would out of a pre-ground spice or herb um, we've got the kombucha which is awesome I love this kombucha and basically that thing pumps out about once a week about seven of these cans or these bottles so we get you know a bottle a day of good carbonated flavored drink so by having our by processing our food ourselves we get healthier more nutritious food and there's really no limit to the variety the variety of food is limited by the imagination you know another thing worth mentioning is all these are seeds and seeds sprout so basically 
you can put them in a container like this. I put some notches in and water them a couple times a day and you have fresh greens. Um, back to basics. <laughs> so the third thing that we're going to talk about is cooking. So this boat has no microwave and the oven actually sits on top of the stove. So for now this boat only has a single kerosene burner. Um, it used to have a diesel stove and then I replaced that with an overpriced Wallace diesel stove that after a couple years it that dirty diesel burnt to the point of it wouldn't boil water anymore. Well that sucks. Kind of like almost life-threatening because you need to cook this kind of stuff to eat it. Um, I remember you know propane's very popular too. I remember uh, uh, meeting a guy in, from South Africa in the Canary Islands and he was basically stocking up on canned food to take down to the Canary Islands because he couldn't get his tanks filled so he was just going to eat cold cans of food thousands of miles of sailing from the Canary Islands to South Africa anyway kerosene is super easy to get you go to any airport and you get jet a fuel and that's kerosene um, so for a pressure cooker, saves a lot of fuel, so I'll use a pressure cooker. For an oven, I'll stick a small, I'll basically put a little grate on here with a bit of water, and I can put that in, and this could be bread, and this is an oven, in a sense. It's kind of small, but it works. Cast iron, I would have thought, have to rust, but keep it oiled, and there's a couple of cast iron skillets on here which work great too. Um, so, that's the cooking, basic cooking. In some ways, you might think it extreme, but really, when you consider the garbage, like there's an incredible amount of garbage even in the middle of nowhere. Like, look at this video, this part that I took of... Like, look at this garbage that is in the ocean more than a thousand miles from any land. It will outlive us. Not only that, but some animal will eat it and then they will die because of suffocation because that plastic's not going to break down like anything else they're used to eating and they will sink to the bottom but the plastic will float back to the surface to be eaten again and kill so that plastic will outlive us and it'll kill many things over and over and over again so I actually feel some proud to have, like, here's a container that I had to throw away. It's full of plastic. This was an old um, vinegar jar for cleaning and making kombucha. And this contains over two months worth of garbage. And I think, wow, that's pretty darn good. The goal actually should be zero. But if you take do more of the processing yourself and buy less processed foods you'll have more fun you'll eat more nutritious food and you'll have less garbage and the variety of your food is only limited by your imagination it's that means it's unlimited so before I end this, I'd like to go a little bit off topic and show you a bit of the spot where I'm at right here. So here we are, a uh, long ways from a grocery store, eating nutritious food. And uh, where are we? We're at 16 degrees, 57, 
minutes south uh, latitude and 144 degrees 35 minutes west longitude. And um, it's like inside of a coral atoll. So um, there's no boats around, so there's no wakes from anything. And that's, you know, this, the weather basically is coming from here. That's to the east. And you can see the waves breaking over there. That's the rim of a coral atoll. And, but those waves aren't making it because they're breaking up on those coral, coral rocks. And um, so we got the palm sand. It's just white sand. Um, calm. Kick back spot. Anyway, that's it from the Sogging Witch. Stay strong, eat well, keep on sharing your smile. Over and out.